Okay, hi guys, and welcome to the show. Before we get started, of course, the obligatory wristwatch check. And as we're talking about the history of scientific advancements, I'm wearing my Belova Acutron Space View, AKA the Richard Rogers. This is somewhat of a sequel to the video I did on uh, the photography of Kudelka, uh, which many of you absolutely adored. Again, we have an artist in his prime recording a world-changing event involving horology. If you missed that important video, have a look back and enjoy. Today, I'm gonna to talk about something very close to my heart. And if you've seen a few of my early posts on Instagram, the artist we are discussing today has painted several of my, shall we say, more affluent and successful ancestors. The English painter Joseph Wright of Derby is to my mind the greatest painter of the 18th century. That is if you count Turner for the 19th century, of course. As his name suggests, he was born in Derby, England, 1734, to a respectable family of lawyers. He decided to become a painter, studying first in London, then traveling to Italy, famously painting an eruption at Vesuvius. He would go on to be heavily influenced by the already established Italian masters that would later inspire his own chiaro scuro style. So what has he got to do with horology? Well, upon his return to England, uh, it was considered a world-changing period known as the British Enlightenment. Great Britain was unquestionably one of those nations leading the world in scientific, cultural, economic, philosophical developments and ultimately industrialization. From Isaac Newton, Samuel Johnson and countless others, it was all happening. And this era coincidentally was also the golden era of English watchmaking. And just to put it in context, this was of course before the inevitable Swiss takeover of this craft. Derby returned at just the right time to capture it all and immortalize it forever in paint. Now there are quite a few famous works by Derby at this time, but a piece called A Philosopher Lecturing at the Orrery was undoubtedly the most important and relevant of them all. Painted between 1763 and 1764, at the peak of many watchmaking greats like Mudge, Tompion, Arnold, Graham and all the others I neglect to mention, this was an undisputed masterpiece of the chiaroscuro style. Beyond its technical mastery of light, colour, almost photographic realism and bewitching capture of a moment in time, it perfectly encapsulates the age of enlightenment, especially when it comes to horology in one single painting. The vividly illuminated onlookers literally glow with astonishment at the marvels of mechanical engineering before them, while a philosopher gives a lecture using the orrery. The orrery is a mechanical model of the solar system, a miniature, a clockwork planetarium. Each planet with its moons is a sphere attached to a swing arm which allows it to rotate around the sun when cranked by hand. Almost like a manual wind watch, if you will. When in motion, the orrery depicts the orbits of each planet as well as their relative relationship to each other. The orrery depicted by Wright has large metal rings which can simulate eclipses and give the model a striking and exciting three-dimensionality. This device now resides in the British Museum and miniaturized versions were found on the tops of tables and mantel clocks towards the end of the 18th century. It was a complication only for the super rich due to the skill and complexity of the engineering involved at the time. It is also a complication very rarely seen even in the present day, with only a handful of watchmakers ever attempting it, such as the Graham Turbion Orrery from 2013 and the Van Cleef and Arpel Midnight Planetarium a year or so later. However, it still remains one of the most breathtaking, underappreciated complications to behold, especially today with cutting edge horology watchmaking, now making it possible to have this magic come alive in an even more miniaturized scale all on your wrist. Perhaps the only complication to give the wearer an almost godlike feeling in perspective. But imagine the amazement the onlookers must have felt hundreds of years before the moving image of cinema, YouTube clips, and the instant entertainment we so easily take for granted in our time. The event depicted, although exciting, 
does not give a philosopher lecturing at the orrery its high dramatic impact. That responsibility falls on the painting's strong internal light source, the lamp that takes the role of the sun. Wright mimics Baroque artists like Caravaggio, who inserted strong light sources in otherwise dark composition to create dramatic effect. Most of these earlier works were Christian subjects, and the light source were often simple candles. Wright flips the script here very cleverly with a scientific subject matter, challenging the set of categories of the rigid, French-dictated hierarchy of genres in the late 18th century. What may seem normal now was controversial at the time, almost to subliminally suggest mankind's progression in understanding and controlling the natural world around him like a god. Mankind literally coming out of the darkness by their own hand in ingenuity. The gas lamp, which acts as the sun, achieves two things in the painting. It illuminates the scene, allowing the viewer to clearly see the figures within, and it symbolizes the active enlightenment in which the figures are participating. Although each of the figures in the painting is clearly modeled on the specific person, Wright's work was not meant to be a conversation piece in the 18th century sense of the expression, and we can only guess at the identities of each person. Most likely the man standing taking notes is Wright's friend, Peter Perez Burdett, and the man seated at the far right may be 5th Earl Washington Shirley, the initial owner of the work. Several identities have been proposed for the philosopher delivering the lecture. The most tempting theory is his face is modelled on that of Sir Isaac Newton, the great English scientist whose help heralded in the Enlightenment. To this day, it remains one of the most beautiful representations of horology in art the ultimate recording and encapsulization of a momentous shift in mankind's history by a genius at the peak of his talent and career. So we have come to the end of this video. Please do share your favorite horology related artworks in the comments. I'd love to hear your favorites and perhaps I might even do a video on them. The book featured unfortunately is no longer in print. However, you can find it used uh, occasionally on my Amazon store, which is linked in the description. Uh, it truly is worth every penny, and uh, in my opinion, is possibly one of the best books on right. Anyways, that's it for today. Thank you so much for watching. Please don't forget to like this video, and I will catch you in the next one. Okay, ciao. This is a public service reminder for the good gentry. Please follow us on Instagram, join the Facebook UGWC group and click on the bell to keep notified of new videos. Don't forget to keep it positive, keep it gentry, onwards and upwards. Thank you.